welcome to today's uh, AirFocus webinar about how AirFocus can support modern product management. Super excited to have you all here today. Um, super quickly to kick things off. Um, shortly about me, my name is Malte. I'm the co-founder and CEO and uh, CPO still of AirFocus. Um, we are the world's only modular product management platform, as many of you know. And I founded AirFocus roughly five years ago because I was always dreaming of a platform like AirFocus because, because I was a product manager myself and I was uh, desperately battling Excel spreadsheets and PowerPoints and I was always looking for a better way to kind of do product management and kind of solve user problems. I'm additionally also a father of two. And yeah, I'm currently also on a juice detox, um, which my wife um, forced me to do. Um, so please be patient with me. Um, the team here at Africus can confirm that it's, uh, it's a bit of a stressful time for me right now without any food. So let's dive into the agenda real quick. So we're going to talk about what is modern product management, then how to actually implement kind of the, the theory that we cover in part one. How do we actually implement that in AirFocus? And then we are going to look at a few key takeaways from the entire session. And then hopefully um, there will be um, interesting and uh, plenty of questions in the Q&A session afterwards. So before we dive into what modern product management is, let's quickly talk about the state of product management. So we here at AirFocus recently interviewed uh, around 600 product management managers, and we will soon also publish a report on modern product management. And as a sneak peek, um, the data confirms what we all know, which is that product management has become mission critical for almost all companies and industries. However, despite like a lot of product management best practices um, being around and, and everywhere, 86% um, of product managers still claim to be trapped in the feature factory and not really focusing on outcomes and more like um, uh, pumping out features every day because some C-level person asked to do that. And yeah, I think we are all trying to change that. So, but there's also like a lot of work ahead of us with, with, which you can see by this very large number here, right? So what is good and modern product management all about? So the next slide won't be super new for you, but I, I really love it because it serves as a good reminder, right? Our job as product managers is to discover a product that is valuable, usable, and feasible. Yeah? So PM is this intersection of business technology and the customer or the UX, however you want to frame it. And I really love this chart because it symbolizes why product is so hard, right? So. Let's get a bit more concrete. We at AirFocus, you have defined three success criteria of modern product management. So it's about generating the, the right kind of outcomes for the business in this messy environment between like these techn technological possibilities and the, the customer need. And um, yeah, we, we have identified these three success criteria, which number one is the effective product strategy. So um, the effective product strategy very uh, goes hand in hand with a, a clear product roadmap, and we're going to cover this on the on the next slides. And then number two, very important, you want to have empowered teams, yeah, teams um, that are enabled to build um, discovery to delivery workflows that that actually empower them to solve um, the, the problems that they are asked to solve faster, right? So. Um, this is also going to be a chapter we're going to uh, dive a bit deeper very soon. And then thirdly, uh, this is also, uh, I think, a, a topic that we, we are all super aware of and we are constantly be re reminded of is the customer centricity. So to solve the right problems through like centralizing and organizing feedback and generating these, these deep insights that, that help the product teams uh, better understand the, the users and customers and do a better job. Yeah. So let's double click on each of these three criteria for now. So product strategy is the logical plan of how the product will drive its part of the company strategy. It's about how to make the product vision a reality while meeting the needs of the company as you go. Yeah. So I think that's a 
short and, and, and precise statement that um, outlines really what, what this product strategy part of this first success criteria is. And then here also um, what actually the definition of a product roadmap is. Because it's the document that communicates the direction that you are going to take to achieve the goals that the company or product is aiming for, right? Um, and yeah, I've over time have heard quite a lot of different roadmap definitions, and um, I, I think you don't want to be too strict. Uh, but I think um, how how we define a roadmap is for sure not a collection of features that are to be released uh, and then put on a on a Gantt chart. That's that's not uh, a roadmap, that's what a release plan is there for. Yeah, but in, in summary, um, the first success criteria is super key because in the past um, with like less products out in the market and less competition and all of that, um, you would maybe be fine by just launching more and more features um, every month, but that's not enough anymore. You you will win or lose based on the quality of your products and, and the ability to implement a product strategy appropriate for, for where the company is addressing the right customer needs. So the second one is super interesting. It's about empowering each team to build unique discovery to delivery processes so they can solve hard problems faster. Yeah, And this is based on the underlying understanding that every company product, uh, product team um, is unique. And that's, that's why you, you, you also need to live and breathe product management processes that work for you and that, that fit you, right? And uh, you can um, empower your cross-functional teams to solve, solve these problems. Yeah? And that only works when, when, when you actually um, also can work in, a, in an environment that is effective, right? It's not just about um, like understanding the right problems. It's also about effectiveness and efficiency at, at some point. And the teams need to be empowered to um, to, to define workflows that make sense for them. That's, that's a big and key um, mantra here at Air Focus. And irrespective of whether you use dual track, agile, or the double diamond framework, um, all these frameworks differentiate between um, the problem space and the discovery, uh, the solution space, right? So problem space being the discovery, solution space being the delivery. I mean, a lot of this is, is not news to you, but it's kind of here right now um, to frame the discussion around what we're gonna, gonna see in the product um, very soon. So product discovery essentially helps you figure out the problems as well as the tactics that actually helps you solve the problem while product delivery builds that solution so you can bring it to market. Yeah? And I think best practice around this topic is that product organizations make uh, product discovery like an integral and continuous part of their processes. Yeah? They empower their teams to implement um, the right workflows and processes that make sense for them while still making sure that they're kind of doing the, the, the things that the customers want and kind of being in line with the work of other teams. And then also, of course, being uh, um, kind of guardrailed by the, by the higher level strategy and roadmap. Yeah? You, you, you need these guardrails. Um, so this could also mean then, and here's an example, that um, maybe the web team, team A here, runs a very modern dual track agile process and they do rise prioritization, they use Jira, they use Amplitude. So they have kind of their way of doing things, but then team B is maybe following a different uh, methodology. Um, here in this case, not very different, but at least slightly different with the double diamond methodology. And they're also using maybe a different prioritization framework if they use any um, they're also on Jira, which is great because you they can maybe um, sh share some work on, on, on shared projects or so. Uh, but they're using like a different uh, analytics or, or user research tool with full story, right? And then this company, they have a third team, which is a more internal focus team. And for some reasons, uh, which might be good reasons, they're still on some like waterfallish uh, or similar uh, workflows. And since they don't really have like market facing customers, they're not really focusing on these processes a lot right now because it's very clear what they need to do. So, and they might be on like a completely different uh, project management tool. So what you see here, like this is an example um, where, where you see these empower teams um, running um, individual workflows that make sense for them. Yeah, And it's, um, I think it's a good thing in many cases. 
uh, if you make sure they're kind of following the higher level roadmap and if you make sure they kind of are, are being customer centric. So, and then this is the third point around the customer centricity. We have observed that um, the best product organizations set up feedback management systems that really feed back to the product teams and inform the work they're doing to ensure they do, they're solving the right problems. So we will see this later in our focus also how, how you can centralize feedback and then create these deep insights um, for the product team and the product management people. Yeah, so this is the, the theory part. And we are now jumping to the how to actually implement all of this um, in Air Focus. So it's about how to bring this to life in your product organization um, and how to, to configure that in a way that works for you. Yeah? So Air Focus, um, as a quick intro, is designed to make modern product management easy by giving you the tools to create a product management system that fits your org and your team and your needs. Yeah. And um, I know I'm repeating here from time to time, but this is really key to uh, the framework that I just introduced, but also the, the Air Focus platform that we are entirely focused around um, solving your needs um, and understanding your needs and then giving you just the tools that you need in order to, to do that, right? So uh, with our flexible platform, we help you with uh, like, we have you manage the strategy, help you understand the user needs. Prioritization is a big topic, uh, has always been. And we help you obviously align your teams around clear roadmaps. Uh, before we get started, let's take a very brief look at how AirFocus actually works in its architecture, right? So in AirFocus, product work is organized in workspaces. So a workspace is made up of items that could be like your initiatives, your opportunities, your epics your feedback, right? Um, items, views, fields, apps, and integrations. Yeah, so, so that's really that's really it. And I will show you that uh, on a real product in a, in a minute. For the AirFocus customers here on the call, you, you all know this, uh, but we have some, uh, some, some, some outside people here, which I'm very excited to, to welcome. So in order to, to follow our modern product manager, product management framework, um, you um, have to kind of work with multiple workspaces and connect them in a, in a clever way. Yeah? And a combination of three types of connected workspaces could look like this. And this is what we're also going to see in the product very soon. So here, you have a strategic roadmap on the highest level. And then you have the opportunity pipeline, which is on the opportunity or idea or epic level, however you want to call it. And this is the place where you push these opportunities through a, a process, your discovery to delivery process. And then um, all of this is informed through feedback and insights. So you're centralizing feedback in one place and then generating these um, connections to, to the product work here, be it on your opportunity pipeline or the roadmap up to you. Um, but the idea is that you always have um, the feedback and, the, and what the customer wants at hand. So let's now dive deeper uh, into what each of these three workspaces can do and how they're connected and, and also how, you, how they con contribute to your modern product man management journey. So in AirFocus, um, this is for the new people, this is the AirFocus home. On the left side, you have your sidebar, which you can uh, easily collapse. And in AirFocus, we have uh, templates. And the templates are the fastest and uh, best way to create a workspace. And here you find the full product management workflow template. So you can see in just two clicks, you can now install this workflow. And this workflow gives you exactly what we just saw on the, on the previous slide. So it gives you a strategic roadmap. It gives you a, an opportunity pipeline. And it gives you a feedback and insights workspace. And here we already have it pre-configured. So let's um, dive right into the strategic roadmap. So um, before we talk about what you can do here and what's the job of this specific workspace, let's super quickly um, get familiar with the, with the essentials of AirFocus. So in AirFocus, this is the workspace right now. This is where you can collaborate 
with other people around um, this topic or product management in general. And you can invite these people super easily here. Then, uh, as introduced, we have items. So this is the entity here in AirFocus. On this workspace, um, we have configured them to be initiatives. And then each item has fields. Or you, so you can add a field value to, um, uh, to, to the item. And you can also manage your fields, very importantly, here in the field settings. So you can create all types of um, field types. Um, up to you. Again, we don't want to define which fields you're seeing in your interface all day. And um, the third component are the views. They are also custom, so you can define which views you want to interact with and have in order to visualize your items and fields. And then the fourth dimension are your extensions. And extensions essentially uh, have integrations. So we have all kinds of integrations with like Jira, Trello, Asana, Azure DevOps, all these get stuff done tools. And then, of course, um, the feedback uh, tools like Enercom and Slack. And more coming soon. Yeah, so this is the basics of AirFocus. And um, the strategic roadmap, this is the workspace where you will find and manage your high-level initiatives and projects. This is about big problems to solve. This is nothing that changes every day. Um, it's usually in line with what like C-level or higher management um, kind of ha have in plan. So um, it's, a, it's a strategic document that, as we've uh, defined earlier, kind of um, provides direction and visualizes it and, and helps get alignment across teams. Yeah, so you're solving the right goals and, and, and implement the right initiatives. So um, here in this workspace, you can customize, customize the roadmap so you can, for example, um, see the objectives also. So you want to like swim lane by objective very easily. You can also kind of make the view look much different. So you can color code items. You can also show the, the linked opportunities. So um, you will learn in a minute that um, the strategic roadmap is connected to the opportunity pipeline through a feature called hierarchy. And since it's enabled here, you can um, also show the, the child items of each initiative. And uh, let's quickly talk about how the uh, hierarchy can be configured. So you can see here in the workspace settings that uh, this workspace here at hand is the parent workspace of the opportunity pipeline. So um, for each of the items, you can um, see the uh, linked opportunities and you can add more from the, from the other workspace, um, which we will also um, enter in a minute. All right. So what can you also do here? Um, you can visualize the roadmap in different ways. So um, you can see here, there's a, there's a view that um, shows your initiatives on a very simple and lean list view, uh, which you can also make and look like a little bit of a, um, a tree, right? So you can see here the, the nested opportunities, uh, but we also have different uh, view types and you can customize them depending on your needs. So if you want to want another board that's maybe showing a subset of the items, easy. If you want to sh show these initiatives on a timeline, which is maybe for this roadmap exercise, not what we want to do right now, but it's uh, we have different view types and, 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 and they're very powerful. And then the other thing is uh, that you want to share these roadmaps with different audiences in different ways, right? And you can do that uh, through share links. Um, so you can um, easily create a share link, um, configure it in a little bit, password protected, and then send it out to people. And the people will, in real time, see uh, what you have put on this view. And if you have a view that maybe only shows a subset of the items and kind of color codes them or does whatever, um, the people who have access to the share link will only see that. Yeah, but that, that's a that's a core core job of the roadmap to inform and communicate. Uh, your plans and that's why the sharing especially on the roadmap level is is super key all right let's let's now switch to the opportunity pipeline which is a another workspace in which is a bit bigger so you want to use the opportunity pipeline workspace to manage your opportunity and epic backlog and you want to focus on the problem space here really um uh, 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 primarily 
and you want to run these discovery workflows and prioritize um, the, the epics and opportunities. And then towards the later stages of the life cycle, you also want to plan the delivery and hand over items to Jira, maybe with um, like timeline views and so on. So if you have multiple product products or teams, we we in most cases, not in all cases, we recommend that each team or product gets its own workspace. So it can build these unique discovery to delivery workflows. Um, because we've we've seen on the example on the slides um, that there are very often good reasons why why teams have like these slight differences in how they work. And yeah, let's quickly um, also talk about like the benefits of, of, of such an opportunity pipeline, right? And I have here this, um, this little image attached. So the, the, the opportunity pipeline is a dedicated space for, for each team where they can set up discovery to delivery workflows that fit them. It's kind of your source of truth for all your product. And we here at Airfox also use um, Airfox ourselves heavily. And um, there's kind of a rule when it's not in Airfox, it's not, it, it's, it's not existing. So we put everything here, all the comments, all the notes, all the files, all the links. And this is super helpful because you know where to look for stuff. And then this place here, the Opportunity Pipeline is also super great for visualizing approved work and monitor progress when things go to delivery eventually. Yeah. So what you hopefully not, by now have um, learned from me um, that, th that this workspace is um, APMs and product teams entire universe where they spend most of their time. And here on the backlog, they can like easily uh, manage all the data of the items. Uh, it gives them kind of a good overview uh, around what to do. And you can also see this item already is, has been sent to, to Jira. Um, if um, we would want to, to send this one um, to Jira, we, we could easily do that with um, a bunch of clicks and then track the progress from within AirFocus so we see how it's developing in Jira. So, so that's all um, uh, very easy to, to configure. Um, and then just as a quick reminder to, to understand how these workspaces um, work together and communicate with each other, also from this workspace here, you can configure the hierarchy. So we had this exact same interface on the strategic roadmap workspace. And here we have it again. And here you see this workspace, the opportunity pipeline, is a ch child of the strategic roadmap workspace, which means for each of the items here, you can um, add an initiative on the roadmap um, and really kind of make sure that, that the epic or opportunity level is in sync with, with your higher level plans on the now, next, later strategic roadmap. Yeah, and then another feature that we um, that people heavily use on this hierarchy level here, not so much on the roadmap, but on the on the epic um, opportunity pipeline level at a certain stage, it makes complete sense. Is the priority ratings app, and the priority ratings app allows you to standardize prioritization with your own custom scoring framework. Right, so you have here multiple factors, um, three three of them actually. Uh, y factor, X factor, and R factor. You will understand in a minute why we have three and why they're called like this, because they um, also can be shown on a um, two by two chart. And then for each factor, you can define uh, the criteria that you want to to use here, and also the weighting of of, of the respective criteria. And there's like a lot of um, additional uh, powerful functionality here. For example, custom formula, but I'm not gonna go into detail at all here. But what this Priority Ratings app gives you, uh, if you want it, again, it's a modular piece of this workspace. You can enable it, you cannot enable it, but it gives you this prioritization framework here. And you can then um, kind of give, give ratings for each of these um, um, opportunities. And uh, when you, you do this, or maybe I should quickly um, to better visualize this. Um, show you that um, kind of depending on what changes you make here, uh, the priority score gets changed. And this is really helpful because it gives you this kind of North Star metric on, on other views. So you, so you always have at hand, okay, why am I actually doing this, right? Because this is kind of a, the result of, of what you have here. And then um, once you're done with the priority ratings, we also visualize your opportunities here on a, on a two by two chart. 
Yeah, we have the quick wins on the top left and the time waste on the on the bottom right. And the bubble size, if you use that factor, um, can also depend uh, on the rating that you do. In this case, it's not configured. But this view um, for a certain stage of this um, discovery to delivery process makes complete sense. For example, when you when you already know what the problem is, you have done like basic discovery, you know roughly what the effort is. It, it, it's, it's a really powerful tool um, to kind of prioritize. And um, again, we have multiple prioritization templates in the template store. Uh, if you want to kind of try try something else that uh, depending on on what works for you and then um here on the board view this is uh, actually my favorite favorite view here this is um, where you push your opportunities and epics through this kanban pipeline workflow and it's a little bit inspired by what sales people do um right they they have this pipeline of of leads and then they push them through and at the end of the day they buy something and i think you can also uh, approach product opportunities a little bit like this. So um, they arrive here because someone has an idea or because a customer mentioned something. And then at some point together with your team, uh, you make the decision, okay, to move this to discovery. Then potentially um, when you don't reject it, you want to uh, send it to design. Um, then it goes into development in your Jira and you can track the progress from in here. So when it moves to a, a, a later status in Jira, it will automatically update here in AirFocus as well. And then usually when it's live or deployed and um, it's not like Jira territory anymore, I think the, uh, the, the the job of the product manager or the product team is not over, right? Because you're still measuring success. You, you still want to make sure uh, to generate the learnings for, for the problem that you solved. Uh, maybe based on the data that you generated afterwards, but it's a it's a key part of of PM also to to measure success after you launch something and then potentially kill kill projects and and end opportunities again. Yeah, so this view best reflects your discovery and delivery process, and it's really good to align the team. It's the single source of truth for the product team, and um, of course this is just like one way of of doing it. You can customize the the statuses that you want to use, but what you see here, where you have uh, from new discovery design um, to eventually done, this is a very proven workflow that we also use at AirFocus ourselves. So when you have now prioritized which opportunities to pursue and you have slowly started to enter the solution space, uh, so the delivery phase, uh, then you will inevitably have planning conversations around when to implement items and opportunities. Um, and a time of view is a great tool in this stage as it uh, allows you to visualize um, also the dependencies. It helps you plan, um, helps you and the other stakeholders to, to better understand wh wh when something will be delivered, how long it's going to take. And um, it's really a, a very helpful planning tool. Um, and it helps you with your releases and your sprint plans for sure. Okay, great. So um, for this high level view of um, Opportunity Pipeline, we are done and we would now move to the Feedback and Insights workspace. And you wanna use this workspace to capture and centralize feedback from different channels in one place, right here. And then you wanna organize it and segment it in a way that suits your needs. So you then later can turn it into uh, valuable feedback piece. So, so you then can turn these valuable feedback pieces that you find here um, into insights, right? So by linking them to your opportunities. So um, this workspace here is linked to the opportunity pipeline via the insights app. So you can here see um, the power of the the modularity and the and the apps and how they can interact with each other. So you can. Um, link it to this one opportunity pipeline if you have one but if you have um, three as outlined in the example uh, on, on, on the slide deck you can also add multiple workspaces and use this centralized feedback repository to inform all kinds of departments and workspaces and this um, workspace uh, here with the inbox view is really like a, a mailbox of the product team so where the colleagues even can send feedback from slack or customers can uh, provide um, the feedback via like our forms or email and then stakeholders you can give them access and they can also leave leave, leave feedback directly here and inter interact with you on the, on the comments um, 
And um, one other f feature that I would super shortly show you, but um, it's not like part of a focus topic today is the Air Focus portal because the Air Focus portal is kind of a website that you can create with your custom logo and custom colors and custom pages. And this is a place on the internet that you can uh, create an Air Focus and where you can send selected items and present them in a kind of more market facing way, right? So um, these items are looking much better. You put maybe a nice um, designer on design on it and, and, and a better market facing description. And um, so it's not like this typical internal um, item that you that you use um, when, when you do like pro pro product management ticketing work in Air Focus. Um, so you can send your items, uh, be it on the roadmap, be it on the opportunity pipeline, you can send them to uh, your portal or multiple portals. And then you can also get feedback from, from the people uh, via the forms here. So you can ask for general feedback, but you can also ask for feedback for, for given items. And this feedback uh, can also land here in the feedback and insights workspace. So you have a very neat way to, to, to collect information from, from your people. But you can also integrate with Intercom or Slack or um, Zapier or other channels. Uh, really make sure to, to also establish a process in your company around looking at this feedback in a regular base. And then, um, and this is now the key part of the feedback and insights workspace, you want to generate these insights. So let's say this uh, part here is um, a very valuable feedback piece. So um, you want to now create an insight for it. And the way you do this is you highlight the relevant parts in that conversation here. In this case, it seems like a chat. And then you want to link um, the this highlighted part with a, an opportunity in your opportunity pipeline. Yeah. So we have now done this. So you can see there's, uh, this one has, uh, has one insight to um, an, an item in another workspace. And when we now switch um, to that other item, so we're switching again um, to the Opportunity Pipeline workspace. So you can now see um, here on the item that there are actually um, four items, uh, four feedback uh, insights. And you can um, now in real time get a really good understanding about, about the context of the customers that said something about this um, um, push notifications thing, right? Yeah, so um, you can also then here on the on the, on the table and in the prioritization framework see um, the items that um, the insights that have been added for each of these items, and um, and you can also make uh, the insights a criteria of the prioritization framework. So every time um, the insight count gets increased, so a new insights get added, depending on the weighting that you give the insights criteria here in the prioritization uh, rating settings. Um, your priority score gets updated in real time, which is very powerful, right? You're essentially giving your customers and users a, a seat on the prioritization table. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then very important, uh, as a last step of the, uh, the, the, the feedback loop, you want to get back to the customers or whoever sent the initial feedback, right? Whenever you have, you have an update for them. So let's say the push notifications uh, Epic now uh, moves to done, which you can see here. Um, you may want to go back, get back to these people in these individual items and then um, send them a quick email. Hey, by the way, the, um, the, the feature that you've asked for has now been launched or the problem that you raised um, has been resolved. Yeah. Yeah, so this is really um, what I wanted to present uh, to you on the on the highest level, how you can um, implement this um, more theoretic um, modern product management framework with three success criteria, how you can implement that in AirFocus. And the, um, the best way to do that is with like three workspaces um, as a start. And then you can customize these workflows. If you happen to have like feedback um, in multiple places and you, you have good reason why you want to split it up, just add another feedback workspace and link it to your one or many opportunity pipelines. Um, if there are good reasons to have a second strategic roadmap, um, do it, add it. You can also, um, and this also is something that I'm 
not going to go into details about, but you can also use a very powerful app called Item Mirror, which allows you to um, kind of um, mirror items from one workspace to another workspace and then do work in that other workspace on that item and have them linked in a clever way. So these workspaces are, are meant to communicate with each other. And that's really the power of, of, of the platform. All right, so um, I'm really done with um, the demo right now. So let's take a little bit uh, of a look at the key takeaways of today, which I would love to uh, also get feedback on in the Q&A session afterwards. But um, number one for sure is organizations, teams and products are unique and they require unique solutions. And um, you have seen now in AppFocus how um, these teams can can do that in, in an AirFocus workspace. And then secondly, you empower the product teams and PMs to find their way of working and they will solve the problem. That's, that's what we've seen over and over again. This empowerment of these individual teams and PMs is very powerful because you have the third key takeaway here. The roadmaps and these clear feed, feedback processes are kind of guardrails for these empowered teams. So they, on the one hand, have a lot of freedom and autonomy to to, to work in, in the workspaces. But on the other hand, they're always making sure to um, use the Insights app, centralize feedback, link it in a clever way, and also um, link back to these high-level roadmap initiatives on this kind of shared uh, workspace. So these are the three key takeaways. And I would really love to um, now jump into a Q&A sessions where um, we talk a little bit about um, the things that, that you have in mind. So many people ask, how can we use AirFocus for portfolio management and planning? That's a, a really great, great question. And maybe I super quickly actually jump back now. And um, we are going to have a look at the opportunity pipeline here. And we are quickly, for the sake of um, this exercise, quickly duplicate this uh, this workspace here. So we have the here the opportunity pipeline um, team B, okay? So um, this is a completely different team that's having their own workflows. It's having their own items. Maybe team B is working on the mobile app team opportunity pipeline um, A here, uh, to be precise, is working um, on the web product, yeah? And you can now, in this uh, constellation, um, create a workspace. Maybe we quickly, quickly start from scratch that acts a little bit like a portfolio view, right? So instead of now adding items here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, mirror items from team A, and we're not gonna do like advanced field mapping right now. Um, so, Oh, sorry, I'm, I, I just, so I don't know why I cannot. So I think I have to close this, add another. So yeah, what we're now doing is we are um, mirroring items from uh, these workspaces. And I just realized, I'm sorry about that, um, that um, the Opportunity Pipeline Team B doesn't have. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. So this should work. I think I have maybe not done enough configurations. So we want to show all items that match a certain objective. And then we, um, for the second one, we want to um, get the same items that also match that objective, right? And you can now, and when we do that, um, see how we actually um, integrate them here. And I need a view first, of course. Yeah, so in, it's it's now pulling the um, items from the, the two workspaces into this view here, which we quickly prototype, right? And you can see here when you now um, differentiate uh, the swim lanes by, by, the, by, the, by the different workspaces, you can see um, how each of these items um, now end up here. And this is a bird's eye view for, let's say, a head of product or someone 
who wants to see on the same hierarchy level, see items um, uh, together in, in this portfolio. And that's, um, that's what's um, a, a very powerful tool here. Yeah. And uh, you can also combine this idea of the item mirror app with the, with a, um, with a strategic roadmap and hierarchy. And so you have like a lot of tools to um, unite different teams and, and, and solve problems across, uh, across these teams. Okay, moving back to the questions. There seem to be more questions. Can AirFocus be used as a collaboration platform by other departments? I feel like some departments can manage their work on AirFocus. Is it possible? Another great question. So yeah, for sure. Um, the, the, the art of road mapping is something which I never understood why it should be exclusive to product management. Um, defining the right objectives, maybe with a tool like OKRs, and then figuring out the high-level initi initi initiatives that help you achieve these objectives is something that makes sense for a marketing team, even sales, CS, everyone who, who runs projects. Yeah. So um, what we've seen in AirFocus a lot is that these kind of surrounded departments first start using AirFocus as a kind of contributor or consumer. So they, so they interact and read stuff and, and so on. And slowly but surely, they also uh, move their work over, usually starting uh, with, with a roadmap on their own and then maybe moving to, to a more advanced uh, process where they also work on the opportunity level and then link stuff with hierarchy and so on. So all, all what you saw today, I think, makes complete sense in, in, in other departments as well. And we at AirFocus also use it in, in, in the other departments. Number three, how can my team use AirFocus to stop working in silos? So that's a great, great question. Another great question, because I think what I introduced a little bit earlier was a little bit in favor of, of, of good silos, right? I was heavily pushing the idea of the autonomy of the product team in the kind of unique workspace that they can configure. And I think it's a good thing. Um, so. It, it really depends on, on the type of silo that, that you have. I think giving um, a team um, the keys um, to the team is, is a very good thing. But on the other hand, if the teams don't collaborate with, with each other and they don't work towards shared objectives is, is obviously a very bad thing. And that's why these, these guardrails of like customer centricity and the, the, the product roadmap or product roadmaps is so important. And I think if you, really implement what we've shown here, I think this will break a lot of silos and, and, and help you achieve better cross-team collaboration as well. Yeah, I mean, on these virtual web webinars, it's uh, sometimes um, you, you don't really get a lot of feedback. I hope I answered the question right. Um, and I will now jump to the next one. If you don't have the feeling and you're not happy with the question, uh, feel free to to send an email at malte@airfocus.com or, or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm super happy to to, to continue the conversation there. So now, question number four: Modern PM setup requires the upgraded accounts of Airfocus. Is it built that way by default? Um, so it depends on what you mean by upgraded accounts. So um, the Airfocus hierarchy feature is enabled uh, on our uh, advanced plan, which is um, which comes at $49 per month. And I think I didn't show uh, any features today um, that went beyond the advanced plan. So it's actually um, quite feasible on a, on a, on a, like on, on a, on a low price um, TNR focus. Number five, what if I would like to sit down with sales teams in different parts of the world and would like to, to later select or merge the priorities for the different markets? Great question. So maybe I can very quickly um, show that in, in the product. So in AirFocus, let's go to the opportunity pipeline of team A. So here you remember that we configured this prioritization framework and we did like all these uh, prioritization ratings here. And of course, all of this is great. But to be honest, um, are you really sure that this is an eight and maybe not a five? It's kind of on the level of each cell here. It's, it, it can be subjective, right? So for that reason, we have um, a feature called Priority Poker. 
And with Priority Poker, you can, oops, you can um, kind of make prioritization inclusive and make this whole negotiation exercise around prioritization um, also much more fun, right? And the way it works is you create a game, a webinar game, and then you start adding items from this pipeline. So let's add these two items. And then what you do is you invite people from your uh, company or whoever has access to this workspace. And it can also be read access. So it can be the salespeople as outlined in the example. And then you um, give them um, you give them certain permissions, right? Let's say Amando is from the marketing department and he doesn't really have uh, really a good idea about team effort because he's not a developer. Uh, but he has a good feeling on impact and revenue. So you maybe just want to remove these one, this one criteria from him. And then what you do is you kind of um, group prioritize these items. So me as the game owner who just created this game, I can um, either um, ask the people who joined this game to do this on their own, right? That like everyone does it asynchronously. So everyone goes here and changes these values. Or I can start a live session and then when the, the moment I click here, um, people uh, will also see this in the interface and then they can only rate this item in real time. And we can maybe on a Zoom call have a conversation around uh, around these things. The idea is that everyone um, does these ratings and you can see in real time here um, how I'm progressing in terms of um, uh, having filled out the, the criteria. And then let's say Amando and a few others have also done this. Uh, me as the, the game owner, I can lock this item and show the results. And you can see how the people um, in this game have rated this item. And you can see right now there's high agreement because it's only me. And usually you see like a really nice distribution of who rated um, what. And um, you get a better feeling of, um, yeah, what this, this score here should be. And you can um, um, override this suggestion that we make here, which is one in this case. You can do that. Um, but I think it's, a, it's usually a good idea to, to, to follow this average, um, just to, to be fast also, right? And then when done, you um, kind of complete this rating and boom, you have just changed uh, the life uh, values of this item. I hope this was not too fast. Um, Priority Poker is something that our customers really love. So another question, do you remember to create, uh, uh, sorry, do you recommend to create opportunities, prioritize them and then create the initiatives or vice versa? Interesting question. Um, I think very often, there's no right or wrong here. Um, very often you, you just have these ideas and they don't necessarily need to be clustered in a, in a higher level initiative. But sometimes you come from the other end, right? You, you, you look at, okay, this is 2023. These are the five things that we want to do in the first half. Um, this is what we think are the high level initiatives on our now next later roadmap. And then let's let's create the opportunities um, because on the opportunity level, you maybe also do like a lot of experimentation and you have like an opportunity solution tree running, right? All of this. So let's find these opportunities that link back to these high level initiatives to to um, yeah to to solve the uh, to 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 achieve the and implement the the initiative. Wow, more more questions. So does the portal feedback form support different languages so we can collect feedback from users in different countries? Um, that's a so so right now Airfocus only supports English in terms of the the, the kind of the the words and copy that we provide. Uh, but you can customize the portal a lot. So you could build a, a portal maybe for the English market in uh, with like items in, in English, but you could also um, support a, a portal that um, maybe for the, for the Spanish market with um, more Spanish copy. Yeah. But um, I think multi-language um, for portal is a, is a great idea. And at some point we're, we're, we're going to have that. So there's another question. Is Airfocus capable of managing scaled agile processes where there are objectives, themes, initiatives, hierarchies? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the hierarchy as we've um, shown it is, uh, is uh, as, as most things in Airfocus, very flexible. So you can um, build a product hierarchy that makes sense for you. And objectives, I think is a little bit of a special topic 
um, that we're heavily discovering ourselves here at Airfocus right now. So um, we are very keen and uh, excited to um, yeah, um, provide a solution around OKRs and, and goal setting in general. And um, I, I, because I personally right now, I mean, the discovery is not done, but I don't think that uh, OKRs um, and, and the objectives should be part of the product hierarchy. In, in some cases, it may make, make sense, but I think it's something different. It's, it's kind of um, more on the side flowing above your, your, your other things. All right, so many amazing questions. So there's another one. Can you organize the insights? Maybe clustering or apply a hierarchy or will it remain a one to a dimensional list of insights? So um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I understood the question correctly, but um, uh, you can link a feedback item to as many other items as you want, depending on how you configure the, the Insights app. Yeah, and um, also in that feedback workspace, you can um, do all kinds of um, customizations around visualizing stuff in different ways. So if you're not a fan of this Gmail-like inbox view, you can move to a board view. Uh, you can also uh, even put, put your feedback items on a timeline. It, it's, it's up to you. And um, I think the key is, that you do this, that you centralize it, and that you have this habit around looking at it and then organizing it, and, and then also putting it to some sort of like out of your mind, right? So, so the so the inbox is empty, and, and that you make these these connections to to the opportunities and 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 and, and initiatives, maybe. Okay. Good. Um, there seem to be more questions. Um, and the team will get back to you about the unanswered questions after the webinar. Um, so going back to the screen share real quick. I wanted to say thanks. Thank you all for, for joining this webinar. It was good to have you and I really loved the questions. Um, if you want to experience the new way of product management yourself, you can go to airfocus.com and sign up for a free 14-day Airfocus trial, or you can reach out to our friendly product consultants and book a demo with them. We're always happy to, to talk to you and, 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 and have conversations around products and your, your problems. And if you thought this um, topic around how to do modern product management in Airfocus was interesting, you can... Um, also, read the guide uh, by scanning the QR code below. Um, if you don't have your phone in front of you uh, at hand, you we will also share the report with you afterwards with, with an email. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for, for joining today. And yeah, uh, reach out on LinkedIn and uh, give feedback also uh, if you like this webinar and if we should do more of those and whether you have questions. We are super happy and, and, and uh, to talk to you. And thanks again for, for joining. Have a great day. Take care.